Welcome to the screencast in which we discuss the parametric approach to spectral estimation. In a previous screencast, we discussed non-parametric methods. They are based on the Fourier transform of either the segment of a signal or an estimate of its autocorrelation function. The advantage of such approach is that it doesn't require any prior knowledge on the data generating process. However, since in practice the data is windowed, the spectral estimate will suffer from spectral leakage and loss in resolution. We can overcome this limitation by using a parametric approach. The idea is to model the autocorrelation function and use this model to then calculate the power spectral density. Since we have a formula describing the model, the values outside the window can be extrapolated from the model, thus in principle recovering an infinite length signal. However, choosing an appropriate model and model order can be challenging, and when not appropriately done, can lead to poor estimates of the power spectrum. In this course, we will focus on modeling the observed data as an ARMA process. While the parameters of autoregressive models can be estimated from an estimate of the autocorrelation by linear regression, moving average and full ARMA models require the resolution of nonlinear equations, making the estimation quite challenging. In general, the procedure we need to take is as follows. First, we choose a model, and as just mentioned, the focus of this course is on ARMA models. Then, we estimate the parameters of the model from the observed data. For this, we will use the least square approach. After estimating the model parameters, we need to check the model performance using an appropriate metric. In this course, we will consider the R squared of the model fit, the final prediction error, and the Kaike information criterion. After choosing a metric, we need to ask if the performance are satisfactory. If that's the case, we can then proceed using the model for our application, which in this case is estimating the power spectrum. If it is not satisfactory, then we need to start over. As first instance, we consider modeling the observed data as an autoregressive process of order p. Recall that this means driving an LTI system with no zeros and peoples with white noise. The system is typically referred to as innovation filter. The difference equation for such model describes the observed data as composed of two components, an unpredictable part, here represented in red, and often referred to as innovation, and a predictable part, here represented in blue, and obtained by a linear combination of the past samples, or in other words, filtered by L of Z. The goal of autoregressive modeling is then to find the parameters of the filter, that is, the filter's coefficients A1, A2, and so on, and the variance of the input noise. Once we have these parameters, we can easily obtain the power spectral density by the formula given in the slide. Note that by this formula, we can obtain an exact value of the power spectral density at any theta, so we overcome the limitations in terms of spectral resolution. But how can we estimate the model parameters? The first way to do so is by using u Walker equations. Basically, we look for the set of parameters that minimize the error between the observed signal and our signal model in the least square sense. This means that the expected value of the square difference between the observed signal and our signal model is white noise. Although we do not prove it here, the derivation of the yule walker equations can be found on the website in the section on ARMA models. Please note that in the matrix equation shown here, we assume real-valued signals for which the correlation is a symmetric function, and thus R of minus L is equal to R of L. To apply this set of linear equations, all we need to do is to plug in the values of an estimate of the autocorrelation function, which we can obtain from the observed data. And since we need p plus 1 parameters, then we need to obtain this estimate for p plus 1 lags. Another way to obtain the model parameters is by using Wiener filters. Although Wiener filters are beyond the scope of this course, here we briefly show one specific FIR uh, Wiener filter, that is the one-step linear predictor, as a convenient way for autoregressive signal modeling. 
The general goal of uh, Wiener filters is to filter an observed signal in a way to minimize the difference between this signal and a desired signal, in the least square sense. To do so, we use the statistical properties of the observed and desired signals. We define j, the cost function, as the expected value of the square difference between the observed and desired signals, and we find the set of parameters, that is the filter coefficients, that minimizes this cost. The solution of this leads to the so-called normal equations. The filter coefficients are then easily obtained by inverting the normal equations. In the formula, capital R is the autocorrelation matrix equivalent to the one we saw before for the u worker equations, while Rdx is a vector representing the cross-correlation between the desired and the observed signal. To calculate the filter error, we need to subtract from the autocorrelation of the desired signal, calculated for lag 0, a linear combination of the cross-correlation value as shown in the slide. How can we use such simple filter for estimating the model parameters from an autoregressive model? The first observation is that, compared to the previous scheme, here we assume that the observed signal is obtained by filtering white noise by the innovation filter. Therefore, if we are able to design a Wiener filter that takes the observed signal as input and gives white noise as output, then we would basically obtain the inverse of LZ. So our desired signal in this case is X itself. We know that an autoregressive process is the result of some innovation, which is unpredictable, to a linear combination of past sample. So to design a linear predictor, we use the observed signal as the desired signal, and a delayed version of the observed signal as the input to the filter. When we design a one-step linear predictor, then this delay is 1. In practice, this means that if we have a signal of length n that goes from 0 to n minus 1, we use samples from 1 to n minus 1 for the desired signal d, and samples from 0 to n minus 2 for the delayed version of x that is our input to the filter, and basically represents the predictable part. The final key passage is that we want the filter error to be white because we modeled our signal as autoregressive process, and thus if we subtract the predictable part from the observed signal, we should be left with white noise. Once we obtain an estimate of the autocorrelation function from the observed signal, all we need to do is to use lags from 0 to n minus 2 to build the autocorrelation matrix, and lags from 1 to n minus 1 for the cross correlation vector. Then we can use matrix inversion to obtain the filter coefficients. But because the filter we obtained is actually the inverse of the filter we are looking for, we need to inverse the sign of the obtained coefficients. Finally, to obtain the variance of the input noise, we simply apply the formula for the filter error. So, to review the procedure for an autoregressive spectral estimation, we start by estimating the autocorrelation from the observed signal for p plus 1 lags, that is, lags from 0 to p. Then we estimate the parameters of the model either via U-Walker or by thinner filtering. At this point, we can obtain the power spectral density by two ways. The first is to simply plug in the estimated coefficients into the known formula for the power spectral density of an autoregressive process. The other way, that is actually implemented in practice in software such as MATLAB, is to calculate the Fourier transform of the denominator of our filter, applying the desired zero padding for better visualization, and then use the same formula to obtain the spectral estimate. In this procedure, however, we skipped an important passage, which is the choice of the model order. A general guiding principle for model order selection is known as Occam's razor, which, simply put, says that the simplest solution is oftentimes the best. There are multiple reasons for keeping the model order as low as possible, such as computational complexity, but also reliable spectral estimates. The trade-off that we need to face is between the model error and overfitting, 
that occurs when the model feeds the noise instead of the data. There are several approaches that can be taken, such as choosing the lowest model order for which the error is still white noise, or using a criterion which balances between the number of parameters and the goodness of the obtained fit. One such criterion is known as the R squared of the fit. Suppose we have a set of observations and we fit the observed data by a chosen model. At each instance, we will have a discrepancy between the model and the observations, which are known as residuals. The R squared is calculated as 1 minus the ratio between the variance of these residuals and the variance in the data. A model with R squared close to 1 is thus very good at explaining the variance in the experimental data. So if R squared is our criterion, we need to choose the model with the highest R squared. However, since as we increase the model order, the error and thus the variance of the residual will always decrease, the R squared is not suited to compare models with different number of parameters. When we need a criterion for choosing the model order, we can use the final prediction error, which formula is given in this slide. Here n represents the data length, p the number of parameters, and sigma r squared is the variance of the residuals. As it can be observed, the FPE is the product of two components that go in opposite directions as the number of parameters increases. As mentioned before, the variance of the residuals always decreases with increasing model order. In the FPE, this decrease is penalized by the other term in the product, which increases for increasing P. Another commonly used metric is the attack information criterion, whose formula is given in the slide. Here again we see two contrasting terms. The first term decreases with increasing P, while the second part is a penalization term directly proportional to P. When dealing with small, small datasets, a version known as corrected IIC is typically used, which is obtained by adding a term that further penalizes the IIC for large number of parameters and for low n. To understand how to do, use this criteria, we show here an example in which we simulate observations by an order 1 polynomial with additive Gaussian noise and then we fit this model with polynomials of increasing order. When we compare the results with different criteria, we see that indeed the variance of the residuals always decreases with increasing model order. We also see that if we were to use the R squared, order 1 and order 2 will be judged equally good, but with the FPE and the IC, we can retrieve the correct model order. And when we repeat the simulation for a second order model, we can draw similar conclusions. The model error always decreases with increasing order, the R squared is not suitable to compare models of different orders, and the FPE and IC provide a good indication. After this parenthesis on model order selection, we now discuss how to go about the spectral estimation by a moving average process. The assumptions are similar as before, but now the filter is an all zero model and thus the quotients are different than the autoregressive process. The approach is also quite similar to before. We need first to estimate the autocorrelation from the observed data, and then we can use U Walker to obtain a set of equations. The challenge now is that the system of equations that we obtain is no longer linear making the resolution a, a bit more difficult. But other than that, the procedure is very similar. So we first estimate the autocorrelation function from the observed data for q plus 1 lags. Then we estimate the parameters b1, b2 up to bq plus the input noise variance via the resolution of the nonlinear U-Walker equations. And here again, we can go by two different ways either by using the known formula for the power spectral density of a moving average model, or by first calculating the Fourier transform of the filter impulse response with appropriate zero padding, and then taking the modulus squared multiplied by the noise variance to obtain our PSD estimate. What about ARMA models? ARMA spectral estimation is somewhat more complex, 
But a possible approach is to first focus on lags larger than the order of the moving average part. Because for those lags, the autocorrelation behaves exactly as an autoregressive process. Then we can use these lags to estimate the denominator. The next step is to filter the observed signal by the denominator. This way, the output of this filtering operation is a moving average process. At this point, we can estimate the autocorrelation of this filtered signal and use it to estimate the moving average coefficients. However, in practice, any ARMA model can be approximated by an autoregressive model once we increase appropriately the model order. For this reason, given the computational complexity of ARMA and moving average estimation, we often prefer to simply use autoregressive modeling. The main exception is when we have a priori knowledge on the model structure, for which we know that we should use a moving average or an ARMA model. To show this, we can see an example in which we simulate an ARMA process of order 4 and 3, which means 4 poles and 3 zeros. And from the simulated data, we estimate the spectrum. In the plot, we show the true spectrum calculated by the formula of the ARMA model and the estimated spectrum by the periodogram. Notice that the periodogram amplitude is somewhat lower than the true spectrum. The reason for this is windowing. When we add the handing window to the true spectrum, then the periodogram seems to better fit the true spectrum. But now suppose we do not know that the data generating process is ARMA4 free and we want to estimate the power spectral density by autoregressive model. Suppose we try different model orders. What we observe here is that choosing an autoregressive model of order close to the real order, that in this case is 4, provides a good estimation of the peak. This can be seen by comparing the purple curve obtained for AR model of order 4 with the true model in orange. However, when we focus on the valley, we see that we need to increase the model order to get a better estimation. This can be observed by looking at the green curve obtained for an AR model of order 10. Finally, we can also observe that increasing too much the model order causes the appearance of ripple in the estimate, which can be seen in the light blue curve obtained for model order equal to 30. Finally, an important remark is that when we estimate the spectrum, we are not so much interested in the absolute amplitude, but rather in the location of the peaks and in the relative amplitude between different frequency bands. This is the end of the screencast in which we discussed how to obtain an estimation of the power spectral density by ARMA modeling and how to choose the right model order. Thank you for listening.